Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to tell you what it's like being an appointment setter. The good, the bad, and the ugly, the stuff that no freaking guru is ever going to tell you out there. Um, this video is for you if you are new to appointment setting and you're kind of considering, hey, is this the right thing for me? Do I actually want to pursue this career? Or maybe if you're a current appointment setter and you just need some reassurance, someone to connect with and see if, you know, the insanity that's going on in the industry is okay or not. So, hey, this is Erica and I've been an appointment setter and an appointment setter manager for the last three years. I've led teams of 23 appointment setters. Anyway, my overall experience has been pretty insane. It's kind of been like an up and down roller coaster and I'll share exactly what I mean by that in just a second. There's definitely been some amazing months and times where everything is going great. I'm making like 8k a month uh, and life is all good. And then there's been some months where it hasn't been so good and you don't really make any money and you hate your life and you hate yourself and you have no idea what the hell is going on. So either way, I'm going to share all the truths. I'm going to break down the entire experience of what it's like being an appointment setter and some of the stuff that people don't tell you. So. How I started in appointment setting is I actually wanted to be a closer. I wanted to be a salesperson because of how much money they make or however people advertise it is like, make 10K, uh, just come and sell this thing, the online course or this high ticket online offer, just come take calls and then change people's lives and make all this money. Wow. Yeah, that's not how it goes at all, actually. <laughs> but anyway, so... That's what I got sold on and this like pipe dream that things are going to be just like juicy and amazing and wonderful. But I didn't have any experience doing sales. So what did I do? I got a course. I got a course. Sales mentor. God bless your soul. Rest in peace. That company it doesn't exist anymore. Or I took their course hoping that I'm going to be a closer. I went through it. I did the whole thing. But I realized that no one's going to hire me because I have no experience. So I'm going to settle for a position less than a closer and i'm gonna work my way up to closer and the position that was less was appointment setter so that's how i got into the industry and it was a really hard process actually finding a job right so this is the truth number one that no one freaking tells you it is not easy to find a job because nobody really wants to work with a person who has zero experience booking calls and it's like yeah on one hand I get it, it's kind of like an entry-level job, but the way online businesses work is they're taking a huge risk when they give a job to someone who has no idea what's going on. When you do get a job with some of these companies, it's like many of them don't actually have any um, sort of coaching or training to show you exactly how they want things done. So instead, you're kind of left to like figure it all out on your own. Or they give you a process that hasn't been updated over the last like two, three, four, five years that just doesn't work anymore. And so when you're using the script and you're applying all the stuff that's in the SOP, um, like it just doesn't make any sense. And you feel so gross and salesy actually texting the messages that the person is ask asking you to like text. And all these online gurus, they don't really train you how to do it because they haven't really done it themselves. Um, and therefore what happens is like, you have to figure it all out on the job, on the spot with like very little training and the training that you've taken from previous courses is usually not that good to begin with and is also outdated. Uh, so that can be really hard to just figure it out on the job if you've never done this before. Like it's almost like, I don't know, I hate to use this doctor analogy because it's overused, but it's like you don't freaking bring a doctor and, and let him do like surgery or whatever on, on the job. Like they don't figure it out on the spot. Like there's a training process that takes months. Pretty much any job that you go into, there's an onboarding process that takes like weeks, sometimes months. And usually with these companies, it's just like, you know, hey, you know, good luck. You're hired. Go do your thing. And there's no systems, there's no process, the script is kind of bad, and it's just not a good time. And this brings me to my second point, which is all those courses that you buy there that's supposed to provide guidance, well, they're actually not that good to begin with, and they're very expensive. Like, 
the courses that I know of that are marketed the most right now on appointment setting, they cost anywhere from five to seven thousand dollars, like stuff like Bastian Slot and Richard Yu, like all of that stuff costs anywhere from five to seven thousand dollars. That's a lot of money, number one. And number two, what they don't tell you is like the average pay for an appointment setter is anywhere from two to three thousand dollars per month. It is not five, it is not seven, it is not ten, it is not fifteen, it is none of that. Like most companies who are looking for setters can only afford to pay them a minimum wage. Because it kind of is a minimum wage job, or that's how it's perceived. Like you're not good enough to be a closer. So you're going to be an appointment setter, which is like the janitor <laughs> in the online space. Like it's it's the least paid, the least fun, unless you're kind of introverted, you like to spend the whole day behind your phone. You can have fun with that. But like if if the course costs anywhere from five to seven thousand dollars and you only make two to three K per month as an appointment setter, like you're just not going to have a good time obviously because surviving i don't know how about you guys but for me surviving on like 3k per month it's just not doable i live in canada you can't do that here like things are expensive now if we look at the actual breakdown of how much setters make right because let's say on average it's three thousand dollars there are some companies that can bring it up to like five thousand dollars with commissions right because it is a commission-based uh, role usually there's no like, there's never a guarantee that you will be able to make that much money and you are very much at the mercy of the marketing company that you're working with or marketing of the company that you work with we were to actually break down the numbers of the commissions and how much you make right because your base pay can be anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars and then you get paid commissions on top so and commission structure is not that lucrative at all right so most companies pay um, anywhere from 50 to 100 to 150 kind of dollars per closed appointment right so the way it works with appointment setting uh, if i'm an appointment setter in dms i'll be booking people onto the closers calendar and if they close then i'm going to get a commission off of that that's the whole job that's literally the definition and the actions of the whole job um so if you do the math like let's say you book three people a day, that's 15 people a week, 60 people per month. And out of those, not everybody shows up because not everybody actually wants to speak with the closer. So let's say you have a 70% show up rate, which is going to cut down your overall appointment set from 60 to about 40, right? And then the actual closer also has a close rate, which is the rate at which they can convert people from a call into a buyer. And typically it's 20%, which is also not that much, but I wouldn't expect more just because that's just the average, right? The closing at 20%, that's maybe like eight closed people per month, right? So, and if you're getting paid regular commissions per closed set, which is about a hundred bucks, you make $800 extra. <laughs> so if your base pay is 2000 and then your commissions are 800, you just made $2,800 per month. Yay, it's almost minimum wage, congrats. So you could argue that there's pros to doing this because you do work from home, you kind of have the flexibility of whatever the hell you're doing at home. Probably nothing much, to be honest, you're on your computer and phone the whole day. Let's be real. <laughs> it's like, I guess if you like being a vegetable and a potato on your computer and phone the whole day, just chatting away, making under or 3k or maybe 4k per month yeah it's not bad it's pretty good if you live with your parents but if you're like an adult with a family and a life and you have ambition it might not be you know the best feasible job for you uh but that's something that no one tells you that's the point is like you have all these crazy claims like make four five seven k ten k per month doing appointment setting guys it's just not it's not like that. Like, it's really hard to find positions where you can make 5k and above. There are some of them, but they hire only experienced people. And if you have no experience in sales, it's going to be extremely hard to securing that position. I do know some 
DM setters that make 10 to 15k per month, but they are most of their income comes from closing deals in DMs rather than booking appointments onto closer's calendar. And I know only one person who did that. I've managed teams and all the stuff. Like I know so many appointment setters. And there's only one that I know of as a manager and the person who knows a lot of people in the space that made like over 10K per month as an appointment setter, which he really wasn't. Like he was closing deals in DMs and he was booking people, but the majority of his money, probably like 70 to 80% actually came from him closing people in DMs which is a whole other skill that nobody teaches you. That's, it's really rare that you'll be able to make that amount of money. Um, and another thing that happens with a lot of these, like I'll teach you how to appointment set courses is they try and like guarantee a position for you that you'll get a position as an appointment setter with a company after you go through the training, after you buy the course, after you get involved, after you don't want to go back. And that guaranteed placement well, it's extremely hard to guarantee any placement, especially if you're getting like hundreds of people to buy your program. The demand and the supply doesn't match. Like if you're getting a hundred people into your program every single week or month or whatever, but then you only have a certain amount of businesses that are actually looking for appointment setters and it's not like businesses are looking for them, you know, all the time. It's not like good businesses are looking for them all the time. So if you have that many people and such, small amount of opportunities that would fit the crowd then you, you just can't guarantee anything there's no guaranteed placement so what happens instead is they give you a bunch of templated messages emails and scripts that you can use yourself and go out there and outreach to those business owners which is a whole other issue because what ends up happening is you have all these hundreds of people using the same templates really messaging the same business owners and the worst thing that you can do as an appointment setter is just commoditize yourself because if you are selling yourself to a business owner and you do it poorly, then there's no way in hell that would hire you to do that to their company because that's essentially what you're doing. So if you're using templated messages that everybody else is using, and I guarantee you everybody else is using them because I just spoke to a business owner <laughs> who said, I've gotten 10 the same messages of the same like certified appointment setter uh, and I don't want to work with them because I've received the same message from like five other people and 10 other people last week so like what's going on so this whole like guaranteed anything is complete and utter nonsense and you may be wondering like oh well why don't people go back and like get a refund and I mean that's another thing that people don't tell you is there's usually these companies and these coaching courses they claim that there's a, a money back guarantee and all that stuff but when you're that far into the process of learning and actually getting a job getting a job is probably like the last step then it's almost like people just throw on the towel and they go screw this this isn't worth it like i'm not gonna ask for a refund and i'm not gonna do it so that's how a lot of these companies survive is like people just don't ask for a refund because people don't care or they think like the company doesn't have their interest so I'm not even gonna ask for a refund because I know they're not gonna give it to me but also there's usually clauses that basically say oh the person needs to meet xyz things by xyz timeline to get the money back so for example if let's say it's an appointment appointment setting course you can say something like the person must have completed X amount of training and have outreached to this many people in order for them to get their money back. And if you're just like a frustrated person who doesn't really want or doesn't fit into that category, then you're not going to ask for a guarantee. Or if you ask for a guarantee, you're probably going to be denied and there's nothing that you can do about it because you have signed the contract and you didn't read the contract. Most people don't really read the contracts, unfortunately. But that's just something to be mindful of. And I know I'm kind of painting a pretty ugly picture here. There's actually a lot of good that happened, uh, at least with me as an appointment setter in my three years of my career. Uh, and I'm going to share that with you as well, because obviously I don't just want it to be all, all doom and gloom here. <laughs> There's been some good stuff. But 
I just want you guys to be mindful of that it's really not butterflies and rainbows. Like there's a lot of stuff that people don't don't tell you. Um, and I feel like I was really lucky in the experiences that I had. I'm probably like 1% of 1% um, who was able to succeed with appointment setting and then sort of like elevate myself to managing people, but also like kind of having this consultancy type thing. Um, but it, it's really like, that's not, it doesn't happen often. But of course, I mean, let's get to the good stuff. You know, the bad stuff's over, let's get to the good stuff. <laughs> so there's tons of amazing things and I've met amazing people on my journey as I was an appointment setter, like in the company and then the prospects that I spoke with and then just networking with other people and other influencers, coaches, consultants, closers, all that jazz. Like I find this is probably the most interesting industry that nobody really talks about is this whole like online coaching consulting industry. So as far as the good stuff goes, like I went, once I completed that course, I went pretty heavy with like networking and looking for the right people. And I kind of noticed a pattern that there's um, some people in the industry who are much more connected than others. So I kind of like started looking at them and how they interact and who they interact with. And that's how I found my first gig, um, which happened to pay really well, but I was, I was horrible at appointment setting because I just really didn't know how to do it. Really lucky to be paid and compensated well, but I wasn't really providing that much value to the company. And so we decided to part ways. And that was when I was actually taking phone, phone setting calls, not really DM setting. So what happened from there is I got another job, which actually was an internship and I wasn't getting paid for maybe three, two, three months or so. I was texting people away. I was uh, kind of like managing a Facebook group, but the, <laughs> the business owner failed to communicate with me that I was supposed to be booking appointments. So we had a little bit of a heated dis discussion as to why I'm not booking appointments. And uh, that the fact that the person never told me that I should be booking appointments, he just said, this is an unpaid internship, go have fun in the Facebook group. And so I did. Um, so that was that. And then, so after we had that conversation, uh, I was like, okay, well, you know, they're not paying me. This is a really good opportunity if they do end up taking me on board. I have to figure out how to do appointment setting. So that's basically where I um, I kind of took it upon myself to figure out like what's the ideal process for appointment setting for generation for generating opportunity in DMs. And surprise, surprise, I do have a course if you want to learn how to do it, but I'm not gonna, you know, fucking charge you five <laughs> K for it like a crazy man. No, I mean, um, there's a promotion running, so you can check out the details in the in the in the description somewhere. But, um, yeah, I'm just keeping it super real in that course. So I basically I took a step back and I learned, uh, and looked at everything that I have learned so far in terms of like sales, in terms of client experience, and then I went to people who already knew how to do appointment setting, and I asked them to teach me how to do it. And then I've implemented my own thought process with their tips. And I started noticing a pattern with how to do appointment setting well. And so that's basically what I show inside the inside the course is how to do it well uh, with my experience, but also how to like stand out and not sound like all the other appointment setters because that's like the worst thing that you can do. So check it out if you want to. Uh, but essentially after I did that, uh, that's where things really started to click and I was booking a lot of people every single day. Not only a lot of people that I booked on calls closed, um, I also found myself surrounded by like really high performer and performers and people who actually care about their job, about themselves, about their mental health, physical health, about how they show up every single day. And so I was finally, it felt like I belonged somewhere and I had a great time working for that company because it was just, it was dialed in, it was a good, good time. Um, but, uh, it didn't, I mean, eventually I left because I wanted to pursue something else. And part of it was just doing my own thing and consulting others and helping others out with appointment setting. Um, but I think just having that opportunity to meet really 
high performing people really, with really high standards um you know impacted me for a better way and it kind of like elevated me to take even more responsibility for my life uh, but also the coolest part about seeing how people operated in that company is i saw how the entirety of business functions which is something that i haven't understood before working in other companies so having that experience and having that exposure and seeing like how offers are made how the marketing is done how the sales is done how the social media is done uh, and how it all works together cohesively in order to bring more revenue to the company because that's the only thing that matters at the end of the day it really opened up my eyes to the world of online entrepreneurship which is sick and i also talked about outside the course oh my god look at that i thought of everything check it out below now we're pitching <laughs> um but yeah it's like you know I, of course i mentioned a lot of negative stuff but like the sheer experience of being a part of a company that has high standards that cares about what they do and does it well that's not something that i can ever um you know forget or not be grateful for or not recognize the impact of that experience that it had on me and my just general education in the space because now i have way more doors open in front of me just seeing kind of like how everything is done i can either stay in the online space i can go work for a larger company bigger corporation and basically say like hey i've been exposed to xyz i've worked you know in, in sales and marketing and this and that and i saw how it all functions together because you kind of end up doing everything at the end of the day um and it's just not it's 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 an experience that not everybody gets to go through and really take full advantage of um so that's that's on the bright side that's the good stuff <laughs> That's the good stuff. I hope I didn't ruin your expectation of the world of DM setting, but you know, it was my hope to kind of paint a more of an accurate picture of what you could expect going into this. I hope it was helpful. You let me know in the comments down below. I don't know, you let me know, man. That's it for today. It was a pretty long episode, uh, but I'm staying consistent with one video a week. I'll do more if I can. Um, but some, da some days you just don't feel like it, but you know you have to do it, so this is one of those days. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in the next one! Bye!